Hello, welcome to this first in a series of videos I'm going to make on the poetry cluster and I'm going to start with the conflict and power cluster and what I've realized is actually you don't need a video on each poem. Much more useful is going to be a video comparing poems. So the first question I get asked is which poems should I compare and the answer to that is actually um, quite easy. Uh, you can compare any poem, it really doesn't matter. Uh, an easy way to divide them up is to compare the ones that are about war together. So Charge of the Light Brigade, Exposure, Bayonet Charge, War Photographer, um, Kamikaze are obviously about fighting. Uh, that leaves uh, Poppies and Remains. Uh, remains would fit into that category easily. Uh, poppies less so. Um, and you can simply group them that way. We've had um, a steer from the exam board that they're likely to include a romantic poem. Uh, so if you're looking at romantic poems, uh, you've got Ozymandias, London might just scrape in there, uh, the prelude would be in there, Charge of the Light Brigade is after the romantic period. Um, so there's a high chance that Ozymandias or the prelude or London will come up um, and you can add into that My Last Duchess. Okay, so one of those four is very likely to come up as um, a named poem and I would suggest also that uh, Charge of the Light Brigade is very likely too. Um, the exam board haven't specified that they will take a poem written before the 20th century as their named poem to print, uh, but I think that's a reasonable guess at this stage. Um, and so my comparisons will tend to um, always have uh, one of these poems uh, in them uh, to, to help you should that happen. Okay, I'm now going to show you some PowerPoint slides from AQA, from the exam board, to show you what it is you need to know. So in assessment uh, objective one, what they really answer after is this, you to have a response to show that you understand the text. Well, that's very easy. Uh, but what they want is a coherent response. So I'm going to give you a method that will show you how to be coherent, how to link things together to write uh, an essay in a logical order. So my videos will all follow this mnemonic, uh, Botsy, uh, or you can extend it to Bootsy. And the idea is that you'll deal with the beginning of both poems. Then you will find language features. You might have learned them as SOAP aims, but I've turned them to OAP's aims so that I can, uh, I can put them into my mnemonic here. So onomatopoeia, alliteration, personification, simile, uh, adjectives, imagery, metaphor, and S usually is structure of some sort. Um, but you'll see how those um, fit. Then a reference to the title if you need it. Um, some comment on the structure, which you will always need, and a comment on the ending. And simply following through this structure will always make sure that your uh, essay is coherent. Now, because you're comparing, you really don't have much time to write a lot about each poem. So you'll talk about the beginning of one and then compare that to the beginning of the other, a language feature or poetic technique in one and compare it to the other. Uh, I've put a second one in in case you're really good and you've got time. Then the title or if you've got time or it's relevant. Structure is a must and then the ending. Uh, because you're comparing with another poem each time, you don't have to know the poem in incredible detail because you simply won't be able to write that much about each one. Okay, now I hope you can see how Bootsy will uh, help you with all of this. So it forces you to analyse language and the structure, uh, and you'll be writing about uh, the meanings and effects all the way through uh, with the terminology from uh, SOAP aims or OPAs, P's, aims. I will actually teach you other techniques uh, that are also um, included. Uh, Ideally, students will use subject terminology as a shorthand uh, to scaffold their analysis of craft. So what the examiners want, really, is for you to keep naming the techniques. That's going to be really important to getting the top grade.
OK, now we have assessment objective three. And what the examiners are after here is the relationship between the ideas in the poem and the context. So here you have to know a tiny bit about um, the history or the thoughts of the poet at the time. But what we don't want is a massive paragraph about the context. Uh, think of context like an embedded quotation where you just slip a few words into your sentence. And that's what context is like. And it's very broad. Uh, you can talk about the society. You can talk about the place. Um, you can talk about um, other texts that are written at the same time um, and other genres, um, or indeed some in the same genre. So this is really broad and very easy to slip in, um, and I'll show you how to do that. OK, the examiners believe that their question will force you to hit all those three assessment objectives. So they think this command word, compare, will force you to um, give a response to both poems. Well, that seems logical. Now, this bit is crucial here. Um, they name, they ask you to look at poets, but what they really mean is this. Focus on the writer in order to, to remind candidates to think about the text as a conscious construct. And so what the examiner means by this is, all the way through, they want you to be writing about the poet's purpose. Why is the poet doing this? What point of view do they want to create? And that will be what's in all my videos on the poems. How do you relate all this terminology to the poet's purpose? Because that's going to get you the top marks. And the other thing that's easy to forget is that um, power and conflict isn't just a catchy name um, for the group of poems. It's actually what the examiners want you to write about. So when they've got ideas here, they mean, what are the poet's ideas about conflict? Or what are the poet's ideas about power? Uh, so this asks candidates to think about the contextual elements. Uh, so you have to know a little bit about what's going on in the world of the poet at that time uh, in order to show what the poet thinks and wants the reader, the contemporary reader, the reader at the time, to think. Now, again, that's not a massive paragraph. So, for imagine, you know, in the Charge of Light Brigade, you need to know it's about the Crimean War and that um, Tennyson is writing in support of the war to glorify the heroic deeds of the British soldier in order to um, boost public support for the war. You know, that's all you need. You don't need um, uh, huge amounts. And then this final bit of advice here, the candidates have free choice about which poem to choose from their cluster. In other words, the examiners really don't care, um, and there isn't a best fit. Uh, what there is, is the one that springs to your mind best. Um, I will pick the one that I think goes best, um, and you can use that in your revision. But don't worry, you know, don't sit there in the exam thinking, oh gosh, I'm not sure which one to do. Um, if it's a war poem, just pick another war poem. Um, if it's one about power relationships, just pick another one about power relationships. Uh, you know, you don't get marks for finding the right poem. Uh, all the poems are potentially right. OK, let's end by um, looking at what my videos will look like in this series. So they'll all begin uh, with Bootsy. Uh, and then I'll simply take you through some PowerPoints. My class have, <laughs> have said, stop doing them on Word documents. Uh, put them on a PowerPoint for us. So here we go. Uh, they'll focus on the beginning of each poem that I'm matching together. Uh, then you'll get a range of the uh, language techniques. Um, I'll put more than you need. You can see that I've got quite a few slides there. Then you'll have an exploration of the title. And I'll give you many more than one point of view about the title. You don't have to um, write about them all. But uh, I want to get you to think deeply about the poem really quickly. And this is a, a nice way to do it. Uh, then we'll have some aspect of um, structure, and then, whoops, there it is, sorry I haven't completed that PowerPoint slide, and uh, then we'll finish up with the ending, uh, which would be that one. Okay, uh, so it'll be very simple, very quick, and I'm going to try and get each video under 15 minutes, so it's easy to revise from. We finish this one in 10, please subscribe if you want more. Boom, drop the mic.